I'm Dr. Cassie, host of this V2V video series sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim Animal Health. V2V will feature conversations between myself and veterinarians about a number of clinical and surgical topics and the medications specifically designed to address those issues. Joining me today is Dr. Jennifer Bornkamp. She is an associate doctor in anesthesia. That's right, she is a practicing boots on the ground veterinarian. Dr. Bornkamp, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. So today we're here to talk about post-operative pain and inflammation and one of the Behringer Ingelheim pain portfolio products that's available to help veterinary surgeons manage post-operative pain and inflammation. And that is, of course, Prevacox for dogs. So Dr. Bornkamp, let me ask you this. As veterinarians, we take our role in managing postoperative pain very seriously, but even so, sometimes postoperative pain can be overlooked or undertreated. Why do you think that is? None of us intend to provide less than stellar analgesia to our patients. Um, the issue is, is that pain management is complicated and it can be confusing. Drugs that we're told work really great for post-operative pain. Uh, today, 10 years from now, we'll, be, we'll find out that it actually isn't as effective as we thought it was. And combine that with the fact that we wanna try to do a lot of different types of pain management, including opioids, local anesthetics, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. We really try to do a little bit of everything, but it can be really confusing, especially if you have a limited drug portfolio in your hospital. Uh, and then, you know, we always have to take into effect our, a lot of our patients are going to go home and our clients are going to have to give the meds. So if they have a dog that they can't give a medication to every eight hours or six hours, we may have to do something like every 12 or 24, or even something longer acting if possible. Uh, and then we have this one issue with older dogs where they're already on medication. And especially if they're being treated for something like osteoarthritis, a lot of the non-steroidals on the market, there's a lot of them out there. Some of them are not approved for um, perioperative pain. They can be approved for um, osteoarthritis. They may be approved for uh, so soft tissue pain, but not orthopedic pain. So um, we really need to find one that's going to work best. And Prevacox is a great drug because it is approved for soft tissue and orthopedic pain. And it's also approved for osteoarthritis. So a, pain, a dog that has OA will not have to be switched over. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you talked about it um, in terms of post-operative and osteoarthritis. Can we touch a little more specifically on how Prevacox can be beneficial in surgery or post-operatively? Yeah, no, that's a, also a great question. So Prevacox is approved for um, the immediate post-operative period. So the, the first three days after surgery, and that's usually when the acute stage of pain kicks in is within the first three to four days after surgery. And that'll be the key time that we want a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory on board. Another unique characteristic of non-steroidals is that they accumulate at the site of inflammation. So even after the three day period is over, Prevacox is still going to work for a couple of days um, after we stop administering it. I consider non-steroidals, especially ones like Prevacox, to be my first line of defense with pain management because they're going to work really fast and effectively. They're very consistent. And then we can add other things like um, opioid analgesics, um, even neuropathic pain medications that are going to work a little bit um, later in the pain process, more in the um, after the three to four day initial period. And then Prevacox is also a drug that's approved for osteoarthritis. So if we have a dog that has OA, we're still going to be treating the arthritis pain at the same time um, as we're treating the postoperative pain. Sure. So it wouldn't have to change up drugs or anything like that. I could see that definitely being beneficial. Yeah. Um, when, so you talked a lot about NSAIDs accumulating at the site of injury and the site of inflammation. And that makes a lot of sense of why that would be really beneficial to have a drug like that on board during that period of time. What specifically uh, would make you reach for Prevacox? What is it specifically about Prevacox? Oh yeah, Prevacox um, is, you know, in a general class of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, 
Um, but it will help um, prevent the activation of the inflammation um, pathway. And it's associated with the COX enzyme and it will prevent the generation of prostaglandins. Um, so it really kind of minimizes that inflammatory response. It doesn't accumulate in the bloodstream over time. And um, after the three day period, it'll be in the tissue, but it'll eventually be washed away. So, you know, we talked about why NSAIDs uh, postoperatively and, you know, specifically what's beneficial about Prevacox. What are the considerations that go through your mind when you're selecting an NSAID postoperatively? Yeah, that's a good question. And it, it can be really confusing too. Um, you know, the first thing we want to make sure is that the dogs don't have any GI signs. So no vomiting, diarrhea, inappetence, nothing like that, um, which, you know, we don't want anything with GI signs because we won't know if it's an adverse effect or the dog's just ill. Um, you also want to get a history of the patient, um, what, what they've been on with non-steroidals. Have they been on something in the past that didn't work well? Uh, I always like to have that history because some owners just have a really bad um, sense of a particular drug in particular. Uh, and then the other thing too you need to consider is the patient age because Prevacox is approved for dogs over seven months of age and it's approved for dogs over 12 and a half um, pounds. So you want to make sure that you have a drug that is um, labeled for use in those patients. And then I also consider whether or not the pills can be broken, um, you know, if they're going to be able to administer it, because, you know, if you have that odd sized dog, you need to make sure they're going to get the appropriate dosage. And then the other thing I like to consider is what um, the non steroidal is approved for, because some drugs, again, are only approved for osteoarthritis. So if you're using it for post-operative pain, you're going off label. And then there's always that potential that if you're, if something adverse happens, you're using an off label product, you could get yourself into a little bit of trouble, but Prevacox is great because it's used for arthritis as well as for post-operative pain. And then the final thing I always consider is what my experience with a non-steroidal has been. And if I've had great success and I've had great success with Prevacox in the past, I'm going to keep using that drug because I know it really well and I'm very comfortable prescribing it. That makes sense. Go with what you know. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you've touched on a lot of great points that are very convincing as far as why I, as a veterinarian, would reach for Prevacox um, postoperatively. What about pet owners? What kind of questions do you get from pet owners about Prevacox? Yeah, pet owners um, always want to know if their pet is going to be in pain how can they tell if their pet is in pain? And then are we going to treat pain? Uh, other things that they wanna know is how can I give the medication to my pet? Can I give it with food? Um, can I give it with a tree? And one of the nice things about Prevacox is that it can be given with food because it doesn't affect the bioavailability of the drug itself. And some, some other drugs are affected by foods and treats. So um, it can be an issue for that, that bond between the owner and the pet. Um, the other thing they want to look for is what kind of things they should be worried about. And some of the things that any pet owner should be worried about is if they see, um, you know, any vomiting, inappetence, lethargy, those would be a good reason to stop giving medications, contact their veterinarian just to, you know, check in and see what they recommend. Um, the most common side effects or adverse effects with Prevacox are usually GI associated, so vomiting and it in appetence are the most common one. And you can see a lot of those with any non-steroidal, but we know with Prevacox, we know what they're consistently, what adverse events are um, recorded with that drug itself. Absolutely. And along those lines, talking about safety, I mean, of course, pet owners want to know about the safety of the medications that we're giving their pet, but also, you know, us as veterinarians, we have that in our mind. We, of course, want to make the best decisions for our patients. Can we talk a little bit about uh, safety considerations when choosing an NSAID and Prevacox in particular? 
Yeah, so I always recommend doing a minimum database with a CBC, a chemistry, a urinalysis, just to make sure that we have, um, you know, good liver values, kidney values, uh, make sure everything is working appropriately. And I also like to check them periodically if I have a dog that's on uh, non steroidals for a long period of time. So if they're coming in for surgery, I'll recheck their renal values specifically. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're not going to give a non steroidal to a dog that has GI signs like vomiting, diarrhea, and appetence. Um, you know, we want to make sure that they're happy and healthy before we do that. If they have cardiac disease um, as well as renal or hepatic disease, those would be cases where um, you would have to really weigh the um, advantage of giving a non steroidal over the, the concurrent disease. And most of the time, we opt, I opt not to give it in those particular patients. When considering post operative pain medications for your surgical patients, you need to consider what other drugs that they've been on. If they're being treated for something like osteoarthritis, will they need to be taken off of that drug in order to be placed on a drug that is approved for post-surgical pain? Or are they on a drug that can be used for surgical pain as well as for osteoarthritis? Prevacox is a drug that can be used for post-operative pain as well as osteoarthritis. With any non-steroidal, including a drug like Prevacox, we want pet owners to look for gastrointestinal signs like vomiting, diarrhea, bloody stool, or inappetence. If any of that is seen, they should stop giving the medication and contact their veterinarian immediately. And then the one thing that we always want to remember is that with non-steroidals, we always want to give the lowest dose possible for an appropriate amount of time, but we still want the pets to have a clinical effect um, of pain relief. So that's always important as well. Well, it sounds like Prevacox is a unique and, and a great choice in a lot of cases. What is it that you feel like truly sets it apart? Prevacox is just very easy to use in a regular practice because it can be used for osteoarthritis. It can be used for surgery, for orthopedic, as well as for soft tissue pain. You don't have to worry about the owner giving it with food and it affecting the bioavailability of it. It can also be given to dogs that are um, over seven months of age and um, over 12 and a half pounds. So it really fits a lot of the patients that come into the clinic. And we know, you know, there's a lot of choices out there for NSAID use. Kind of as we, you know, wrap it up here, is there anything else in particular you want to touch on about what makes Prevacox a great choice? Yeah. When I select any drug that I'm going to give a patient, I always want to use something that I'm familiar with and one that's kind of been around for a while, one that we know has a, a reliable profile. We know what it's going to do if it goes wrong. We know how it's going to work every day. And Prevacox is a drug that's been here, been around for over 15 years. So we, we're very much aware of what to look for if there, something is going wrong. But more importantly, we know um, that it works. Dr. Bornkamp, thank you so much for joining me today. It was wonderful to have you. A great talk. I feel like I learned a lot. And I'm really looking forward to episodes two and three of B2B, where we're going to continue the conversation about pain and inflammation. But now in terms of osteoarthritis and how that pain can occur early in a dog's life, not just in senior dogs. So I'll see you next time on B2B.